a random object and a time limit. This is the hack that took my illustration skills from amateur to pro and helped create standout brands like this. So here's how it goes. There's a wheel full of random objects that I will spin whatever it lands on. I'll have 10 minutes to create an illustration using that object. Along the way, I'll be going through the three most important things to consider when creating illustrations and why this hack is so effective at improving your design skills. Without further ado, let's spin the wheel. So this could land on absolutely anything, which then forces us to draw different types of illustrations. So we are drawing a donut. So now we know the object we'll be creating an illustration from, I'm heading to Google to source an image and I will meet you in Adobe Illustrator. We have our image, there's 10 minutes on the clock. Let's do this. So the first place to start when drawing illustrations is making sure that you are keeping them really nice and simple. And to do that, you can draw in black and white. Now this is a technique that I use throughout all of my design processes, especially in brand design when creating logos and illustrations. This is just because if you start adding color to begin with, you can get distracted very easily. And then it takes away from that original design. So you wanna make sure you're keeping things simple. So start off by drawing in black and white. So the next thing I'm gonna do, we've just pierced a hole through with the Pathfinder. I'm gonna change this to gray. I'm gonna duplicate this. And then I can start adding something custom onto this. So this leads me nicely to the next point, which is right now you probably notice that I am using a reference image. Now this is because I actually really struggle with drawing from memory. So I just do not have the skills as a designer to draw from memory. And I know some designers have that skill. I envy you if you do. I actually used to feel like a bit of an imposter, but I came to realize that it's okay to actually draw from a reference um, and to use a guide, especially when drawing illustrations, because not all of us have that skill. So do not worry if you use um, reference image, but one tip I will give you, and I think a lot of designers may get this a little wrong, is that if you are using a reference image, you need to make sure you are adding something completely custom onto it. You are adjusting what is there and just making it kind of not look like that original reference image. You are just using that reference image as a guide and then making something completely custom for you or your client. And you can add your design style onto it. You can add another object to it. And just basically use it as a guide and then adjust um, the template. So I am adding some icing onto this, which is something custom that wasn't originally there. We had um, chocolate icing, but we're gonna add the drip effect. And that is something that um, the original reference image didn't have. That just means that if another designer was to find this reference image and they wanted to draw a donut um, and they just use the exact same reference image, but they didn't adjust anything and say I hadn't adjusted anything either, our illustrations would probably end up looking exactly the same. And then it's not custom and then it's not one of a kind, it's not unique and it's just the same as every other donut out there. So you wanna make sure that you're just adding something very custom to it. So we've got that basic shape now. The only thing that I've missed is this part of the donut, which is easily fixed. Just send that to the back and I will just select both of these paths and I'll use the Pathfinder Unite. And it means we've got the donut as one and the icing as one. So once you've got that basic shape, I think I'm just gonna use the um, smooth tool just to smooth these lines out because they were a little bit rigid. Um, it means now I can start adding in some color. So I think, well, that is very vibrant, <laughs> very vibrant. I'm just gonna tone this down a little bit because it is a little bit too harsh for my eyes. And then I'm gonna add in some beige for the donut color. Just maybe need to add a little bit more orange into that and that works really nicely. So I am gonna go on to point number three and this is gonna completely take your illustration to the next level and that is adding depth. So in everyday life, through our eyes, we see depth as humans. So we will see shadows, we will see lighting, we will see shading, and that is just completely natural to us. So we wanna make sure that we are adding that onto our illustrations to make it more pleasing to the eye and more natural for us. So to do that, I'm gonna show you how we can do that. Um, and that is firstly by adding strokes onto the illustration. So I'm gonna just add something a little darker onto the donut. I think it needs to be a little bit darker than that. We'll go shade darker and we will adjust the pink. Let's just make sure we're grabbing the same pink and then adjusting from there. 
And this will basically just help define those lines even more. And you wanna make sure when you're adding strokes and weights onto your lines that they match one another. So for example, this one right now, the donut is five um, and this one is six. So I'm gonna just increase that to six so that they are nice and consistent because otherwise, if they're inconsistent, it just doesn't look pleasing to the eyes. So I think I just wanna make this less beige because it is quite dull at the moment and I think it could go a little bit darker. We don't want it to be a pale donut. So we've got that basic shape and I just noticed here, I just wanna bring that in slightly so it kind of looks like this icing has been splatted onto that donut and it is not perfect. Okay, I think that looks quite nice. We'll just adjust that drip. Okay, so the second part of adding in depth is adding in shadows. So to do that, I'm gonna copy and paste this. I'm gonna move this icing and send it to the back. And I'm gonna actually change it to the donut color, but we're just gonna go a little bit darker. So then we can start seeing the shadows behind. So the only thing I need to do is get rid of that reference image behind because we can see the shadows. And I'm gonna actually duplicate this stroke here so that it can sit in front nicely of the shadows we've created. So I'm gonna copy and paste that bring that to the front, but we will get rid of the fill so we've got a nice stroke going on. So the only thing now is the shadow goes out of the donut, which we don't want. So I can just use the pencil tool to bring all of these in and I can start shaping the shadow of our donut and make sure that it doesn't go out of the donut because shadows wouldn't do that. Okay, so we're just adjusting what is there and we're just creating our shapes. Right, we've won four minutes 15 seconds, we're doing well. We're just gonna make sure that all of these shadows kind of look like they would. So they're forming a shadow underneath the icing and we're just trying to add in some really nice depth. So we've got that basic shape. We've got, already that's made such a difference. We can see it's starting to turn 3D, which is really good. So the next thing I'm gonna do, we're gonna start adding some shadows on top of the donut. So I'm gonna actually duplicate this again, bring us to the front, and then I'm gonna remove that filled color so I should have a stroke and then that um, stroke and fill underneath so that the shadow can sit behind that stroke. So I'm gonna just start off up here and I'm just coming down and I'm just following the drips and I'm just gonna create a nice little kind of shading and a different tone of pink on this part here so that it will start to add in some depth. We'll just make that a tiny bit lighter and we'll send it behind that stroke. So I think what I'm gonna do is actually adjust this stroke, turn it a little bit darker so that there is a more defined line and that looks really, really nice. So I'm gonna do the same on these parts of the drips just so that it follows consistency and it looks similar throughout because if we were to do it on one drip and not on the other, it would just not look right. We wanna make sure we're following that consistency. I'm just using the pencil tool to do this. So you probably noticed throughout I'm using the pencil tool and it is such a versatile tool. Um, I use it on pretty much everything um, and it just allows you to freehand the shape that you want to draw. I'm just connecting back up, sending it behind that stroke, and already you're starting to notice it's looking a lot more 3D. So the next thing I wanna do is start adding some drips on top of this icing to match the drips here. So to do that, I'm gonna eye drop the um, stroke we've got here. I wanna make sure that it's the right stroke, and I'm just gonna eye drop that because it wasn't, and I'm just gonna create the drips on top of this icing, which I think will start adding more to that depth. What time we're on? Two minutes. Can we complete this in two minutes? We can. We'll add some smaller drops and we'll just maybe do three so we do not um, overcrowd it. Now, the only thing is that these lines have really harsh endings on them, so the caps are not rounded. So we can just adjust that really easily by going to stroke and just changing that to a round cap. And you'll notice that it is very rounded now. So the next thing I am gonna start doing is I'm gonna add some lighting. So I'm just gonna draw exactly like we did with the pink, but I'm actually just gonna change this color, something very light, and we're just gonna send this behind that stroke, and we can just adjust what is already there. So that has, we'll just go up a little bit there because it's looking a little bit weird, but you'll notice it kind of looks like a little bit of light is reflecting off our donut, making it look a little bit shiny. So I'm just gonna add that 
into these drips here. We're gonna do exactly the same as we just did. And it should start to look like the light is bouncing off the top of our donut and it will add to that depth that we have created. Right, we've got 50 seconds, can we do this? I think we can add some lighting onto some of these. We'll just do exactly the same as we've done previously. And it just follows that consistency of which way the light is going. You wanna make sure that you're always drawing um, the same way that you think the light is going. So the shadows will be that side and the lighting will be on the other side. So once we've done that, I think I'm just gonna get some more of these lightings in. And we've got 30 seconds, can I do this? We can finish this donut. I'm gonna add some sprinkles on. Um, let's grab the round rectangle tool. I drop this and I'm gonna just add in some really wacky colors. Make sure we've got the right one. We're gonna add blue, we're gonna add yellow, and I'm just gonna adjust these so that it looks like they are pretty random. How long have we got there? How long, nine seconds. Oh God, okay, we got this. And that is pretty much a donut. <laughs> okay, we've got our basic illustration and I'm actually happy with how that turned out. We could add some more depth into this and we could add some more shading. I think I'd go in with maybe an even darker color here and adding some more shading onto that. But that is not a bad donut for 10 minutes. Okay, so it's 30 minutes later and I've just gone in and touched up the illustration a little as I was rushed at the end. But the point of the challenge isn't necessarily about the end product. Instead, it's about using constraints to help creativity. By having that time limit to create an illustration from something random, there is no time to overthink. Instead, all of that creative energy and focus is put towards actually doing, which is one of the best ways of improving as a designer. Designer. If you didn't notice, the main tool I like to use when creating custom illustrations is the pencil tool. And if you love it as much as I do, then you'll be happy to know that I'm releasing my first ever course and it's all about how to use this tool to create custom illustrations, standout logos, and much more. If you're interested, sign up to the waiting list using the first link in the description and you'll be notified via email when it's released and receive an exclusive discount. But if you're not sure if this course will would be useful to you then you need to watch this video right here where I show you exactly what the pencil tool is capable of.